the field of data science is moving as rapidly as any field that I've seen. Um, and there's a significant amount of competition getting into the field. That said, I'm completely confident that if you follow these five steps, you'll be well positioned to land your first data science job. Okay, so the first step in becoming a data scientist and one of the most important steps is learning a programming language. At this point in the maturity of tools, you really can't get the most value out of your data going through a GUI. Um, and so learning a programming language is absolutely critical to landing a job in the field. In terms of which language you should choose, um, at this point, I think there's really only two that you should even consider, uh, especially as a beginner, and those are R and Python. While I find that R is more user-friendly, especially for beginners, and the community is highly supportive, the massive growth um, and the much larger size of the Python community makes it my recommendation for beginner data scientists. I find that it's actually pretty straightforward to switch between the two of them, so if you find a group that actually prefers R, the switching time isn't very hard, especially if you've developed those skills in the Python ecosystem. I will link one of my favorite resources for learning Python below. The second step in becoming a data scientist, in my opinion, is to go train some models. Uh, I find that the top-down learning approach, in other words, starting, diving right in, getting your hands dirty, and understanding the outcomes of uh, training these models and actually using them, uh, is really important in connecting all the foundations. So I think it's really important to start with, go train machine learning models on data that's interesting to you. Um, train a machine learning model that does something uh, that you could imagine doing in your field or something that you want to do. An image classifier, uh, a rent predictor, something like that. Even if you don't understand all the details of what went into training that model, you're going to have a much better understanding of how all the pieces fit together as you start to learn the more foundational elements. Um, in this case, it can also be an inspiration for you to continue your work. Once you see the power of machine learning, I think you'll be inspired to actually go understand some of the mechanics behind it. I remember I took my first linear algebra class doing things like row reduction and calculating eigenvalues, they were so abstract that they didn't mean anything to me. Um, and I remember my professor specifically saying, don't ask me how this is used because it's not important. If I could have seen that linear algebra was as important as it is to the foundations of deep learning, it would have given me a lot more inspiration to dive into that topic um, and understand it from a foundational level. So once you've got some basic familiarity with machine learning models, step three is to become a master data wrangler. What I've found is I've done many, many different machine learning projects is the trick and the hardest part of the whole process is actually arranging your data in a way that you can feed it to the machine learning model. Um, understanding the tools and the tricks that you can do to clean your data, uh, to shape your data, to format your data, um, and to prepare your data for machine learning takes up a significant amount of the time of machine learning and is actually where a lot of the art comes from. In this step, you'll really want to familiarize yourself with SQL. Many of the most popular databases in the world use a SQL-like language, and so having familiarity with that is going to be key. If you've chosen the Python ecosystem, this is where you're going to become very familiar with the Pandas library. Doing things like aggregating data, summarizing data, merging different tables together, and then doing various manipulations on the data to clean and visualize and understand it are going to be key. The other thing you want to focus on in, in this step is also data visualization. Um, being Becoming familiar with not just simple data visualizations like XY scatter plots, uh, but starting to understand the power of plotting in multiple dimensions and the different ways that you can represent your data with color, shape, size, um, as well as understanding some other visualizations that are really important. My favorite visualization is an empirical CDF, but then things like correlation matrices and pairs plots are really important and powerful tools for understanding and visualizing your data. The last thing I'd think about doing in this step um, is also incorporating some unsupervised learning. Uh, so this can be clustering techniques like k-means, this can be dimensionality reduction techniques like principal components analysis uh, and t-stochastic neighborhood embedding or t-SNE. Um, starting to explore, at least at the base level, some of these things will be really important as you get to further steps. 
Step four in the process of becoming a data scientist is to implement some of the algorithms that you've been working with from scratch. Now, I don't have any kind of belief that you need to implement every algorithm that you use from scratch, nor do I think that you need to understand at the most basic level how every single algorithm works. That said, I found it absolutely invaluable to write some of these algorithms from scratch. One of the things that undergirds many of the algorithms within machine learning is the concept of gradient descent. But I'd suggest that the first thing that you try to code from scratch is a simple linear regression trained to minimize least squared errors with gradient descent. The mathematics behind it is very approachable um, and there's a lot of support out there if you get stuck while you're trying to develop this algorithm. Uh, but because of how pervasive gradient descent is, it's very helpful to understand it at the most basic level. The next thing you might consider is implementing a simple clustering algorithm. I can remember the first time I implemented dbscan and I was able to uh, correctly separate concentric circles. Since then, I've used dbscan for all sorts of interesting problems. A lot of these algorithms aren't as sophisticated as they seem. It's kind of like the first time you make a recipe from scratch. You're convinced that because you've used the box recipe for so long that it's going to be almost impossible for you to do it from scratch or it's going to take a long time. But when you actually make it from scratch, it turns out uh, it's a lot easier. And a lot of times you leave with a much better understanding of how the ingredients come together. The fifth step in becoming a data scientist is to bring it all together and build a data science portfolio. This portfolio can take the form of a website, uh, a blog, or a GitHub repo. So I'd suggest you pick a couple of data sets, or maybe you already have by this point, that are really interesting to you and, do, and build out a portfolio. Three things that I think you could consider sticking in this portfolio is a demonstration of um, your exploratory data analysis and data manipulation skills. One of the things that I found is most common on data science interviews is, do you have the intuition to take a data set and sift through it to find the right value? The second thing that I'd make sure that you include in your, in your portfolio is training and uh, evaluating simple machine learning models. So this could be logistic regression or linear regression, but that process of taking a data set and training uh, and tuning a specific model um, is really important for prospective employers, right? Um, the third thing that I'd suggest is that you demonstrate that you can train a more sophisticated model. Two examples of these kinds of models are Random Forest and XGBoost. Um, both of these models are highly flexible, they're very powerful, um, and to use them properly requires that you have a mastery of not only data manipulation and putting the data in the right format, but also do proper train test split and do hyperparameter tuning is gonna go a long way towards showing your prospective employer that you have what it takes to be a data scientist. If some of this still feels daunting, don't worry. I've got a whole series planned walking you through how to build your data science portfolio from the very beginning, finding the right data set to the very end of publishing your own blog or hosting your own application. If you'd like more content like this, I come out with videos weekly. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I'd love if you hit the like button on this video. Thanks.